So good afternoon, board. I would like to ask the board to allow me and Mr. Garcia to complete our presentation. And at the end of our presentation, we will answer any questions that you may have. As the warden of this jail, it is my responsibility to administer policies, programs, and personnel operations. But the job is much more complex than that. Ultimately, the safety and health of inmates and staff falls on me. One of my biggest frustrations is how little is understood about the operation of this facility and how well-intentioned efforts have significant and sometimes negative consequences. As a correctional professional with over 30 years of experience in this field, I can tell you that is exactly what has happened here. Slide number two, please. The Allegheny County Jail recorded an average daily population of 1,688 individuals this year to date. The vast majority of those living in our jail are compliant to requests from correctional employees. They enter and leave the facility with no problems. A small number of inmates, however, are non-compliant with the necessary requests and either after the escalation and other options are utilized must be forcibly removed from their cells. This is a last resort and an option that is discouraged by, but sometimes necessary. Slide number three, please, Mr. Sykes. Chapter 205, approved by the electorate earlier this year, prohibits the use of the restraint chair, chemical agents, leg shackles on any person in the custody of the jail. According to the American Correctional Association, the best practice to gain compliance before CERT has to enter a cell to physically remove an inmate is the use of chemical agents. As an alternative, as an alternative to hands-on use of force, chemical agents are 90% successful. Beginning December the 6th, correctional officers will no longer have chemical agents available, nor will staff be able to utilize leg shackles or re the restraint chair. The prohibition on leg shackles is a problem for which we still are researching a solution. The loss of leg irons is a tool that directly impacts the transportation of inmates by correctional officers and also raises concerns and other issues when an inmate is hospitalized, including making that person a potential flight risk that could danger the put the general public in danger. Slide number four, please. In my professional opinion, the prohibition against chemical agents will result in more injuries, more confrontations, more safety issues, and that those incidents will continue to escalate. Our correctional staff are already working in extraordinary circumstances but the lack of tools and resources will put their safety and well-being in jeopardy. When de-escalation tactics and diversionary tactics are unsuccessful and inmate remains and the inmate remains non-compliant, a forced hands-on cell extraction becomes necessary. That process involves sending a minimum of five team members who leave their prospective jobs at the facility, potentially leaving other areas short staff to report to the pod where they are needed. Team members look like SWAT, but are actually CERT for correctional emergency response teams. CERT members wear a helmet, shield, body armor, protection for their arms and legs, and then also must carry tools including handcuffs, shackles, shield, chemical agent if appropriate. Because physical entry of a cell, before the physical entry of a cell, CERT members use chemical agent to soften the inmate and encourage compliance. Overall, that effort is successful 90% of the time and no further action is needed. 
you can see from the slide how many times we have deployed chemical agent over the last three years. Slide number five, please. Now compare it to this slide, which reflects the number of times that a cell extraction has occurred. Once chemical agents are removed, the number of cell extractions will increase. If you assume that these incidents are not otherwise resolved, the CERT members would have in, been involved in 84 cell extractions in 2018, 131 cell extractions in 2019, 71 cell extractions in 2020, rather than the numbers that you see here. This is the reason why we sought other tools and options. Slide number six, please. Cell extractions are risky for the inmates and for the team members. This is actual video of a cell extraction from February of 2016 conducted by our CERT team. This extraction was ordered because the inmate was non-compliant with required medications necessary for his physical health. Chemical agents was utilized first, but the inmate used materials to shield his eyes nose and mouth from the spray. As a result, the physical entry was necessary. Could you please play the video? Having a team come in that looks like SWAT and which is going on, having a team come in that looks like SWAT and which is going to physically restrain the inmate can make situations worse. To avoid additional cell extractions and more risk to our inmate staff, we sought additional training and tools as a resource for correctional officers. Can you go to slide seven, please? Sometimes it's hard to get over. Okay. According to the jail, accordingly, the jail entered into three separate sole source contracts. A sole source contract by its nature is not competitively bidded because what is being sought is unique as it relates to their essential function. 
After research on the company and outreach to other correctional technical training companies, it was determined that the training and strategies provided by the Correctional Special Applications Unit was, unique, was uniquely qualified to meet the goals of the jail and provide the best options available. This video is actual footage from a cell extraction using the Correctional Special Applications Unit strategies and approaches. Can you please show the video, please? I just need everyone to be aware that this inmate is a schizophrenic inmate that just broke the jaw of a nurse at that facility. The correction special applications unit was called and the incident resulted in the inmate having no force placed against them. Can we go to slide number eight, please? The CSAU training and strategies ensures compliance with the recent referendum and also enhances the jail's ability to address and respond to all circumstances. Specifically, specialized training, which will last for eight weeks, is already underway to a first group of correctional officers to ensure they have the skill sets needed to manage every emergent situation. The emphasis is on using the lowest level of force options while resolving emergent situations quickly and with minimum disruption to other inmates as well as staff. Senior team leader Joseph Garcia, as well as every other contractor with CSAU, went through the jail's rigorous security checks before being granted access to the facility, just like all other contractors who perform work at the jail. These reviews include National Crime Information Center, or NCIC, checks. In addition to the county jail, Mr. Garcia has also been vetted and granted access to provide training at 66 other facilities, including 52 law enforcement agencies and 14 departments of corrections across 35 states. He has also been vetted, granted access, and provided training in seven other countries, including in England. I wanna be clear here. The methods used by CSAU that have been highlighted in emails, faxes, videos, and other communications are not what will be utilized at the Allegheny County Jail. The facility is not using pepper spray, beanbag projectiles, or canines, to name just a few. The training being provided is very specific to the needs of the Allegheny County Jail. When you enter a restaurant, you have a full menu of options to choose from, but few of us order everything. Likewise, when we go into a store, we don't need to buy every item on the shelf. Even though CSAU offers a broad spectrum of training and services, we have selected only those items we know we need. Often incidents that would utilize the team's skills because of non-compliance are as a result of behavioral health concerns, mental health diagnoses, not taking prescribed medications, or due to drug or alcohol crisis. Can we move to slide nine, please? Today's correctional facilities are, in many cases, also mental health facilities. 40% of, of the jail's current population are on some type of mental health medication. 
slide 10, Mr. Sykes. The number of people taking mental health medications is not a true picture of mental health in the facility. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 20.6% of U.S. adults experienced mental illness in 2019, which represents one in five adults. The National Institute of Mental Health estimates that only half of people with mental illness receive treatment. We also know from the CDC that measures necessary to reduce the spread of COVID-19, which are heightened in the jail, can make people feel isolated and lonely and increase stress and anxiety. In the eight week CSAU training, staff are receiving the most advanced training and will have the schools, skills and tools to de-escalate as well as recognize individuals suffering from mental health crisis, drug and alcohol crisis and behavioral management problems. That portion of the training is presented in the very first week and then reinforced and tested in the remaining seven weeks so that it always remains at the forefront of their response. Slide 11, please. CSAU members wear gray uniforms. They are not outfitted with helmets, but instead have body protection and other protective gear. They carry tools, including handcuffs and tasers, and also carry rescue items, including a first aid kit. CSAU team members are assigned to walk the facility when on duty. It is intended to create a less intimidating environment and provide an opportunity to allow inmates to get used to seeing these personnel and to allow these officials to establish a relationship with the inmates. It's something that the jail administration does on an ongoing basis for exactly those same reasons. The training also covers steps that are taken before CSAU is requested, as well as after a member arrives. In any incident where an inmate is non-compliant, supervisory staff will be called first and utilized to de-escalate the situation. If unsuccessful, medical and mental health staff will be called and will also be used to de-escalate the situation. So These practice. Before you go further, can you please, for the purposes of the uh, the minutes and the board, identify who's speaking? I'm sorry, Your Honor. This is Chief Deputy Warden Beeson. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. These practices have already been put in place. An incident last week resulted in compliance by the inmate after interaction with and de-escalation by the supervisor and medical mental health staff. Can we go to slide 12, please. If those efforts are unsuccessful, the CSAU team will be called to the scene where they will also try to de-escalate de the situation. Based on their training and evaluation of what is occurring with the inmate, this can also mean that the supervisor and or medical mental health staff will be requested to continue to interact with the inmate to attempt to gain compliance. If and only if all other de-escalation options have failed, the, G the jail's CSAU trained team will have the ability to use force to remove an inmate from a location or move them to another location, as is currently the case in our jail and at corrections facilities across the country. This can include a variety of tools, such as kinetic energy delivery systems. These items are specifically designed to reduce the likelihood of penetration, broken bones, or severe injury. Additional Tools include rubber balls and similar items that can be used for diversion or to encourage compliance with commands. Slide 13, please. Levels of force, as well as the application of force, is part of the training and is determined on a case-by-case -case basis that is reliant upon the actions of the non-compliant inmate and his or her interactions in, with and response to the supervisor, medical mental health staff, and the CSAU team member. All interactions with the inmate will be video recorded and reviewed by the chain of command in our internal affairs office to ensure all policies and procedures were followed and to provide for any other remedies or actions. There have been reports that incidents that involve the use of CERT team are commonplace and that the seesaw training, these instances will only grow. That's not the case. It remains our hope and goal to never utilize force against anyone in the jail. Unfortunately, experience tells us that is simply not the reality in the correctional facility. That being said, improvements made in training and interaction with non-compliant inmates over the past years have continued to reduce the number of cell extractions needed to be done. Slide number 14, please. The CSAU contract has not been the jail's administration only focus. 
The provisions of Chapter 205 provide that a person may not be confined to a cell for more than 20 hours a day. In order to ensure that incarcerated persons have time out of cell while still ensuring appropriate safety measures, additional recreation areas have been built in the facility and are currently in use. Slide number 15, please. The restraint chair was an important tool that was used to prevent individuals from self-harm or to restrain volatile inmates. With this use prohibited, the jail has contracted with the company for the installation of 10 padded cells in the facility. Three of the 10 will be located in our intake department with the remainder spread throughout the facility. Padded cells are used in other facilities throughout the country to protect inmates from self-harm, including three county jails in Pennsylvania. And as previously noted, the jail administration is continuing to explore alternatives to leg shackles to ensure inmates and correctional employees are not assaulted with inmates using their feet and legs as weapons or to cause harm to themselves. A future update will be provided when the solution has been identified. Slide number 16, please. Finally, as we shared, the CSAU member, members are receiving significant training to de-escalate and recognize individuals suffering from a mental health crisis, drug and alcohol crisis, and behavior management problems. To ensure that intervention, assistance, and de-escalation is the focus at this facility, correctional staff will also be provided crisis intervention training along with mental health first aid training. This is in addition to the implicit bias training recommended by the Jail Oversight Board that is expected to begin in the near future. 